more at the Compass at VCU to spread the message of freedom and to show people how voting is immoral. Today be the last day to register your preference to violently be forced into the people in a geographic region. And as you can see, the election table is not here today. So I don't know, perhaps we won or maybe they moved somewhere else. But at the same time, we're gonna be here pretty much every single day until the, the idea of forcing your preference into everyone else people just finally let go of that and it kind of dies away we kind of grow from that and evolve from the need to to think that we can solve this collectively instead of looking at each other as individuals um, and with that I'm going to continue spreading the message and of course the two side of the coin how government is immoral as well so take good care and I'll see you at the victory party so that's the hidden bias behind voting behind government that this major this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way a single way and that's the threat of and use of violence of any problems right? versus a plurality of non violent solutions that you and I and my friend here already should. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's very, very much true, and I don't think it's also necessarily in voting because I guess that's why people sometimes feel like voting isn't necessarily the answer. Right, because not only are the candidates not um, representing their full ideals of what they believe, or right. maybe just a little bit, but not all, yeah. that's why they don't vote. And also, it's uh, it goes back to the manipulation. You can you can take that back to here as religion, yeah. and how you would want to, want to manipulate a certain group of people to do what you do, and using fear as a consequence. And uh, I think it's very much true, and we have to, uh, we have to look at the contextuality of fear, you know, and how, how it varies with people to people. What does that smell? Oh, it's construction over there, VCU. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It, it, it is very much like uh, like the religion, you know, right. statism. Uh, the, the, like the government, for example. You know, your compression boots are your voting boots, right? right? Yeah. Behind that curtain. And in secret, you confess their right. sins and that you want to force these ideas onto everyone, right? And of course, when you step out of it, it's like when you come out of a compression booth, you don't talk about it with anyone else. And when people say, who'd you vote for? It's like, oh, how dare you? That's a personal <laughs> issue. And yeah. then you slap your I vote a sticker on your shirt and nobody talks about it again for like another four more years, right? Uh, and that's what I mean. That, that doesn't create any kind of change. That doesn't solve any problems. Like four years doing what? Every four years looking for parking, waiting in line, you know? That's not going to affect any kind of change. And then in a way, it kind of, like you're mentioning, in a, in a form of control, uh, the fear that government has is that they're afraid we actually use a real voice. <laughs> right? So they do so much in trying to convince us and mislead us into thinking your voice is a piece of paper. Chad, right. it's a lever. Don't you dare use a real voice. Because if no. you did, you'd find out that we share these common fundamental values. Yeah, so you and teach us and we lose our jobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so this moral position, though, that you and I already share against right. using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers, right? So you don't vote for political rulers. We can have rules, right? But what government has is a monopoly on rules, right? Right. Yeah. Have a monopoly on law, security, judges, courts, currency, roads. I mean, you name it. Uh, and you don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, you even have the freedom to compete. Yeah. You provide a better service. It's not going to be abusive and harmful to you, the consumer, right? So would you say that causing change is actually in, in gets the individual implementing him or herself in the situation and actually doing something about it? Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It begins in our own interpersonal relationships, first, right? right? Yeah. And then outside of that, uh, start reaching out to one another. Uh, you know, like kind of what we're doing right now, yeah. right? Like before that, we were just strangers, you and I. Yeah. But now we find out we share these yeah. fundamental values, um, and that's pretty much what I want to do. I want to turn to my community. Let's right. turn away from government. Turn away from this organization that right. which already contradicts our values to begin yeah. with. And then for me, it's just like we can we can achieve so much, yeah. you know, applying that together, you and I. Yeah, we can. And uh, this is a start. So thank yeah, you very much. Of course, my name is Cal. Uh, Diego. Diego, nice pleasure to meet you. Well, I got pamphlets if you like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, volunteerism pamphlet. Uh, more videos on like on YouTube. A lot of great stuff out there. I've put together peace and parenting. And, and of course, of course. You too, Diego. I mean, now that I've seen the sign that says government. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you just think like our governmental institutions are already inherently. Yeah. So like it's an illusion of free will, but we're already like working within like a new yeah. structure. Oh yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are two sides of the, of the coin, right? Yeah. Um, once the institution were forced, we're born into, you don't have a choice. Uh, like for example, like social security, they forced a the service upon you before you were born. You did not give consent to that. Right? You never said, uh, I would like that you this is before you were born. So they forced that onto you before you were born. And you'll never even have that when you're time for you to retire. Yet you're still forced to pay for it. Right? Um, I mean that would be considered moral, right? You didn't give 
power of attorney. <laughs> you didn't give consent before you're like a little zygote, yeah. right? But I'm just wondering, like, what's like, what's the alternative? The alternative, okay, the alternative. Uh, I guess we're just skipping the questions. You, you pretty much got this figured out. So the alternative is pretty much in your day-to-day -day life, you don't use violence to solve problems, right? You would say so yourself. Uh, and and our, 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 us uh, over here, are these two gentlemen too, we don't use violence to solve problems. For the most part, none of us do, right? So in the day to day life, we don't use violence to solve problems. So let's continue on that road that we don't use violence to solve problems. Except when you look at government, government only knows how to solve problems through one way, though, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. Right? Everybody contradicts our moral integrity to begin with. Right? Uh, you know, even still, all those government services are still funded through taxes, and taxes is nothing but that, right? If it was voluntary, it would be called charity, right? And, and, if, and, then, and then that's the service that they have, though, they're monopolized services, right? So government has a monopoly in law, which is why they don't allow a polycentric legal system. They have a monopoly in security, they have a monopoly on judges, on courts, on currency, on first class mail, on, uh, on roads, on schools. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services to provide a better service it's not going to be harmful and abusive to you the consumer right and that's what it will look like in a free voluntary society right so what we're advocating here is anarchy like in science by definition it means uh anions and canines and means without archie means rulers like uh, monarchy one political ruler anarchy means without political rulers right so we can still have rules outside of the monopoly and law at least we can have it in a way that we can voluntarily consent and agree upon right so? Uh, for example, like you go to uh, you go to a nightclub. Every nightclub has particular rules, and you consent to those rules and you conduct your behavior as the norm in that nightclub, right? Uh, plus, and they do provide security, right? There's a bouncer there who will kick you out if you're an asshole to the other patrons. Uh, even Disney World has rules. Uh, six Flags, Seven Corners. Uh, you know, a lot of different places have their own particular rules. So you, all right, I agree with this rule. If it was too extreme, nobody would go there, right? It has to be a lot lax. Has to be a lot tolerable, more accepting, uh, which then allows. A freedom for competing preferences of communities. Like now you can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right? It's, de it's dependent on whoever owns that particular property. That is awesome, right? man. I mean, isn't that still like a form of hegemonic? How so? The, the, the nightclub metaphor, you know, you still have like an established standard that everyone has to follow unless they're kicked out. Yeah, yeah, but at least it's consensual. But at least now you have so many choices of nightclubs to go to, right? And all these, it's kind of like you go to a food bar at the mall, competing uh, with, like food agencies trying to give you food, serve you food. Like the most aggressive way they'll come at you is like, look, please try this free sample. Look, no, go with us instead. You know, discount for today for you only. You know, a lot of different ways to cater to your needs, to your preference. That's like the most they'll ever go. And that's pretty much how businesses will go. Uh, we have a sale today. You know, we, we have a discount tomorrow. Join our membership. You get a lot of, you know, percent off. Um, just trying to cater to your preference. So economically, you kind of just like advocating like a free market. Yes, a real free market. A real free market. And, there, and the thing that exists today is a state controlled market. Uh, like corporations, for example. Without a government, there's no such thing as a corporation. All a corporation is, is a piece of paper backed and enforced by government that allows the CEOs to escape personal liability for their actions. Right? Um, and then they're able to offset the cost of the employees by lowering their salaries to the consumers by raising consumer prices. So without a government, like even government has immunity from their own actions, right? So they kind of grant that immunity to other people too in the form of a corporation. And that's pretty much how it starts. So without government, no corporations, it goes back to the way it used to be where we held personal liable for actions. I mean, kind of like give too much faith in humans. Like, well, I, the thing is, I get so much, I get so much faith that only you know how best to decide what to do with your life, right? No one else can decide it, right? Uh, but in, in, a, in a government though, you have strangers deciding what best is your life can be run. They'll say what you can and cannot put in your body, right? But of course, you can't tell them the same thing, right? It's, it's, it's uh, from top down. You can't tell the same politician what he can and cannot do with his body, but he can tell you, right? I, mean, I guess there's two sides of the spectrum. Like, of course, the current model is bullshit. But I do think anarchy is the... I'll tell you, man. It's yeah. It's so unrealistic. Unrealistic? Okay, okay. Oh, well, real, it's very realistic. I mean, again, you don't use violence to solve problems, and that's anarchy. That's me. Right, right. I want to say that's this like, gentleman here. Like, this is gentleman here. This is me. Uh, it's a lot of other friends. This gentleman over here is heard of Froth Bar. I mean, you really can't say it though. Yeah. I, 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 how would you act? How would he act? How would they act? Well, with the if there's no sanctions. Well, right, so you can still have regulations. The sanction would be being socially ostracized. 
like um, like eBay, right? If you have a bad business model, people will rate you down. And people say, don't do business with him. Obviously, you don't have the integrity. You look at your credit history. It's like, look, he's, he doesn't keep his word, right? I, to do risk with you, it's like, I don't think so. I'd rather do someone else who actually upholds their contracts and keeps the word. So naturally, it's not uh, cost beneficial for you to keep you know messing around. Otherwise, no one's going to want to interact with you because these interactions are voluntary. That's the thing is like a lack of integrity yeah. or like a non-adherence to like a common human decency yeah. doesn't always equate to non-profit. Non-profitable? Well, there'll still be. I mean, a non-profitable. Um, no, but there's just two kinds of stuff. You'll still have free market businesses, uh, people that are profit-driven. And you'll still have non-profit organizations. You'll still have philanthropists, right? You'll still have people. I just think people will support bad things. Right. Okay. All right. So, like, name one bad thing they will support. I don't want to go there, but it just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe in like Thomas Hobbes. You know, I believe right. like. Uh, social or, or, contract. Okay, well, all, right, all right, great. All right, so even the social contract is not a real contract, right? It's not a tangible, you never signed it. Uh, I want real contracts, right? So you can live in a community with the rules. So look, of course, a lot of the rules people are going to agree upon is like no violence. Um, violence is violence placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent of choice. I rape, murder, theft, and assault. All violations of personal body rights, right? Uh, so you'll say a kind of like basic. Yeah, yeah. Real contracts, and then you agree to the consequences. But if you have people who want to live that kind of crazy wild stuff, great. There's go join the Thunderdome community. Right? Go join where like you can have all kinds of consequences. Look, if we get into a fight, the consequences says here is a pillow fight. Or the consequence says here, we get into a ring and we fight it out. Or we settle this to an arbitrator. Like you would like when you're driving your car and you have a fender bender. You two don't really do out, your insurance companies do. Right? So you have different ways to kind of resolve this dispute. But at least that will be in a non-violent, uh, more and, and, uh, and by consent. Even boxing has rules, right? Nothing below the waist. No, you're fighting Mike Tyson. And then we can box. Right? I guess I just have this kind of incorrect perception of anarchy through like punks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah, fuck the government. Right? Yeah, yeah. it's like, alright, is, is that it? What's their measure of success? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like kind of, I'm a socialist. Yeah. Right. I, I like regulation. Right. I just, not to such an extent where it's like corporate ran. Right. Yeah, I'm on regulations too, but in a way, like you still have consumer reports. You'll still have a lot of agencies that do accreditation, for example. Like, look, I give this business three out of four stars. As a business, I want their accreditation, right? I want their sticker. So it helps improve my standing, it helps improve uh, the number of customers who feel safe going to my store. You can still have that on a voluntary basis. But again, those are different areas the government has monopolized too, right? Like the FDA, uh, FAA, it's a lot of different areas they've monopolized the service that a free market could do much better, right? And at least it's voluntary. At least you'll have nearly half of your income returned to you. And now you can choose who's going to provide you in a free market to, to best serve your needs, your preference. Like in a free market, again, like plasma screen TVs that came out a couple years ago cost thousands of dollars, right? Today you can buy a better version for a few hundred bucks because there's companies. <laughs> but we don't have competition. When you have a, just a monopolized service, the cost always goes up and the quality always depreciates. Right? That's why you never have social security. That's why it's, uh, USPS is $60 billion in debt. That's why like all the services, like that's why you can't even go to a park right now, right? So the government has a monopoly of these services and now they hold it hostage at you. Like for years, like who cares if McDonald's, you know, go, goes down? There's Wendy's, there's cookouts, you have other options. But when government poses uh, services of hostage, you don't really have a choice, right? So that's what I mean. I, I want choices, freedom to choose and what to do with my own life. Really freedom economic like freedom economics. A free market would have to be like on a global scale. Hey, it will spread. It will spread. All free market is voluntary interaction with consent. That's really all it is. Agreement. And for the most part, we do this all our lives, right? Uh, and, and something that would be idealistic would be uh, what would, would be government, right? To think that after three thousand years, we could still try to control people's lives. Right, every system some government failed, right? And hold people at their own hostage. The currency in your pocket has lost over 97% of its value. That too has been on my bottom. Right, and you're not allowed to keep it. So it's like, uh, like, 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 like reform, for example. It's just another way of saying that the last 99 attempts just didn't work. Like a sacrifice in right? Is that not the definition of insanity? <laughs> well, you give me something to think about. Yeah, all right, cool. My name is Cal. Mazik? Mazer. Mazer, pleasure to meet you. I have pamphlets of your life. I don't really believe in your exchange for five
Which are not, right? And I don't mind if you post it, actually. Yeah. Alright, great, Whatever. thank you. Because if you tie, then pay taxes. Alright, man, take care. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix. This, this government, this organization, only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way. And that's through the threat of the use of violence to solve any problems. Versus a plurality of non-violence uses that you and I are going to share. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that? I could agree to that. Yeah. I mean, uh, not necessarily an anarchist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's great that you, meant, you bring that up. So this more position though that you and I share already against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anons and cations. And means without, archy means rules. Like monarchy, one political rule. Anarchy means without political rules. We can still have rules, but what government has objectively then has a monopoly on law. And that's too much to have a monopoly on security, on judges, on court, on currency, first class mail, on roads, on schools. So you don't have the freedom to cancel, withdraw, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you. How do you suggest that we? Uh, I mean, like you said, we could have rules. Yeah. How do you suggest we enforce rules? Right, right. Without infringing on somebody else's freedom. All right, great. All right. So a lot of this comes, <laughs> comes from through consent, right? Voluntary consent and and, and choices. Like uh, you go to a lot of the nightclubs up here on like in Paris, for example. A lot of different nightclubs have their own different rules, right? And they have their own enforcers, the bouncers, right? So pretty much the universal rule is just don't be an asshole to the patrons, yeah. right? Uh, you have Disney World has their own rules, right? You have malls that says no saggy bottoms, right? And they also have the security that you don't pay. You can still have security, you can still have rules. You can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. But at least it'll be consensual for the people entering that property, right? I agree to the rules and the consequences. That's good to me, right? Yeah. You want to live in a Thunderdome community? Great, go for it, right? <laughs> at least it's voluntary, right? Okay. But it's not voluntary is uh, the services the government forces on you. You don't have consent, like social security. You never agreed to that before you were born, yeah, right? And, this, and you still have to pay for it, and you'll never have it when it's time for you to retire. So all this really revolves around consent. But government doesn't allow to have this consent. It's non-consensual, right? And I want real contracts. So that's what you end up having in a free voluntary society. Real contract, not a social contract. It doesn't exist. It's not tangible. I don't even see it, <laughs> right? I want a car contract or a house contract or a real tangible contract in my hand that I can, you know, sign my name or give real power of attorney to. So would you say if you were born into a situation where your parents put in a contract that you don't want to be a part of, right? How do you? What do you do? Uh, what the, now you have the voluntary freedom to leave. So it's a freedom to well, give consent and withdraw the consent. What if you're like unable to make that decision cognitively? Uh, as a child? Yeah. All right, so, so pretty much you don't really own your children. You pretty much said as a parent, you granted a uh, guardianship to help raise this child. Okay. And the effect that when the child comes up of, of age to understand, the child would have made the best decision. So you know what, you guys were the best parents. Thank you for bringing me into this world because I didn't have a choice, right? Yeah. But you still decided to be my parents. You could have given me up for adoption, you could have given me up for, for, for a lot of other reasons, but in the end, you chose to have me, right? So there's no obligations, you know, going from the child to the parent. Just, um, you, you raised them as okay. a human beings. Yeah. And then when you're grown up, you have choices, right? Because then there's volunteers. Like, you know what? I don't like this. It's too conservative for me. I'm going to go move into that community instead. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah? I think you're ready. Is it going to be on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, do, do you join the conversation? Yeah, so it's a YouTube channel. It's pretty much showing a lot of people, answering a lot of questions, trying to turn it into a community and turning away from government. Okay. Uh, we're part of an organization called Liberate RVA. It's a non political organization. So pretty much just, uh, just doing just that. All right, well, I'll, I'll make sure you're checking out. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let me pass you uh, these pamphlets. Thank you.